everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Nina. I'm a life transformation coach, and here at this channel, we talk all about mental health, personal development, and understanding our own psychology. So, if you're not already a subscriber, please go ahead and become one. We definitely want you to stay connected. So, today I wanted to talk about the concept of being happy all the time and how, even if it were possible, which it definitely is not how it would not really serve us, how it would not benefit us. I know that so many of us have the fantasy or the desire to be happy all the time, and I know that so many of my clients, when I meet them, they really express the desire of being happy all the time. And I think it's perfectly understandable because, of course, it is a lot more pleasant to experience positive emotions over negative emotions. And as a human being, our tendency is to want to really push away negative emotions. We want to, you know, avoid them or distract ourselves from them. We have to understand, however, that negative emotions, whether they be fear or frustration or anger, they are all part of the natural human experience. And not only that, they actually serve a very important function. They are messengers and sometimes the most powerful messengers of all. And while I don't think we are ever going to seek out to experience negative emotions, I do want to talk about why it's so important that we learn to stop and analyze them so we can understand what it is they are trying to tell us. I think it's really interesting because we tend to have a very different tactic with our physical health and our emotional health. So with our physical health, we naturally try to get to the root of the problem when we experience some kind of symptom. So if we are having a fever or a cough or a stomach ache, we try to figure out why. But oftentimes with our emotional health, we just simply try to ignore it or to get rid of the feeling without really analyzing why we have it in the first place. But of course, our emotions are there for a reason. They are prompting us to take action. They're really telling us that we need to look internally and externally to see what's really driving these feelings and emotions. And of course, they are also asking us to make necessary changes. So for example, we might feel anxious or afraid if we feel unsafe or if we feel threatened in some way, even if it's not in an obvious way, or we might feel sadness if one of our needs aren't being met. And these are incredibly important pieces of information to have. And without these negative emotions, we might not get that message. Some of these needs might really be ignored. And when we are able to ignore these messages, we don't make necessary changes in our life. So we can start to think of our emotions as an internal alert system that is trying to give us signals so that we understand how to best live our life. So when we notice that we are experiencing negative emotions, there are five things that we really need to do. The first thing that we need to do is to notice the emotion, to process it, and to embrace it, to actually allow it to be there. Our instinct so much of the time is to just push it away or to ignore it, but that is really not going to be beneficial to us in any way. So we do have to actually experience the emotion even for a short amount of time so that we can gain what we can from it. The second thing we need to do is to determine why we are feeling this way, what caused the emotion. And yes, sometimes it can be very obvious. There can be an obvious trigger for the emotion, but that is certainly not always the case. And many times there are several factors at play. So it is important that we start to really peel away these layers and use some true introspection to get to the real root of the issue of what is making us experience this emotion because the more information that we can gather, the more we are going to be able to pinpoint the most appropriate solution. The third part of this process is really the skill that we're talking about developing today, which is learning how to receive the message from the emotion. So getting to the bottom of what specifically is this emotion trying to tell me? Is it trying to tell me that I feel uncomfortable with this person? Or is it trying to tell me that I don't feel safe in this situation? Or that maybe this isn't the career path for me? We want to get very, very specific and think about what the actual message is. 
is. We also want to notice if it seems that the emotion is suggesting a specific resolution. And we'll know this because when we think of something, if it makes us feel comfortable or if it makes us feel relief, probably the emotion is trying to point us towards that type of resolution. Now the fourth part of the process is the most important part, but probably the part that most people are uncomfortable with, and that is to finally take action and to make changes. It does us no good at all if we you know, experience the emotion and we understand why we experience the emotion and then we do nothing about it, which is unfortunately what so many of us do, and it just eats at us and eats at us. So we must resolve the, the emotion, and the only way to do that is to make the necessary changes. Changes. And the last part of the process is to manage the emotion itself if it is still persisting after we've done all these steps. So many times we will instantly feel relief once we figure out why we have the emotion itself and we have a plan of action or we've actually taken steps to correct the problem. But that's not always the case. Sometimes these things take time. Sometimes we are still feeling that emotion. And once we've really processed it and worked through it, it's okay at that point to let the emotion go. So we can do this in many different ways. And the strategies that work best for people will vary from person to person. So I will go ahead and link down some videos in the description box below that may help you manage these negative emotions while you are still experiencing them if you are but it could include seeking support, talking to a therapist or a friend or a family member. It could involve journaling or getting exercise or doing yoga or something else that is relaxing. So there are a number of ways that we can really reduce and alleviate negative emotions because again, once we have really worked through these emotions and we've gotten that message, it is okay to move on from that emotion. We have to remember that our emotions are not necessarily good or bad in and of themselves. They are simply just signals that help us pay a little more attention to the thoughts or the events that create them. So when we can really learn this skill, we're going to end up leading a life that is in much better alignment with our true desires and our true needs. These emotions exist for a reason and they are actually quite beneficial because without them, we'd never make any of the essential changes that are necessary for our life. We're just going to keep going in that direction because we never experience that discomfort that really alerts us to the fact that changes do need to be made. So I truly hope that you found this video to be interesting and helpful. If you did, please like it, share it with someone else who may need to hear the same message today. And also do become a subscriber if you aren't one already. We definitely want you to stay connected. And I thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope the rest of your day is extraordinary.